What's up, Fookland? It is draft week. That means the rookies are coming, and that means our the rookie rookies rankings. Are coming. The, the rookies, rookies are, are coming. coming. One if by land, two if by sea. <laughs> and our rankings will be out next week. I'm talking about our rookie rankings and our dynasty rankings. They are they are exclusively available with the ultimate draft kit. Speaking of the ultimate draft kit, you can still get in for the lowest possible price with that pre-sale price to get our 2020 stat projections. You've been hearing us talk about those projections. You want to see them in full. That's in the ultimate draft kit. All of our rankings, our, our sleepers, our breakouts, our busts, the app. The app is, is getting even better every single day. So if you want those rookie rankings sooner than everybody else, ultimatedraftkit.com. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in! Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. It's NFL Draft Week. Yes, it is, and we are very excited to be with you. I can't see anything. I <laughs> look. You have sunglasses on. I just just for a moment. I don't know why though. I've been told I need to combine the mustache with aviators by many. Mm. Oh well, because aviators so, go with everything. Yeah, but n- indoors with a computer screen is really not working out. <laughs> So uh, I thought maybe, yeah, I would just take away my vision. That way I could focus on uh, the, my mental picture for the NFL draft. And that's what we're breaking down today. In fact, we are going through rookies on the show today. Yes. The ones that are exceptionally <laughs> relevant for fantasy players. The ones that we will be tuned into on Thursday. When uh, the the ones that I hope NFL GMs are able to be tuned into, as opposed to <laughs> technological issues that they're facing. But I know we're hyped. Jason is guys, man. J- Jason is sporting an NFL draft background here mm-hmm. on the podcast today. I'm super excited for this week. I mean, look, the entire world right now is needing this NFL draft. It's going to be a massive hit no matter if it goes smooth or if it's a catastrophe. But the actual players and talking about them, I mean, we've been talking about these guys, you know, the last month or two, sometimes on the footcast, we'll get some questions. But on this show, we haven't really dove into the rookie prospects the names, the the talent, the skill, the expectations. So I'm I'm stoked to do that this week leading up to the draft. And this really is the precursor to everything exciting about fantasy football and the rookie class because after the NFL draft on Thursday, and on Thursday we have an episode coming out in the morning, we'll make some predictions about where we think these guys are going to land. Um, we'll be talking about them as talents today. But so much about where they'll end up in the rookie rankings, about where they'll end up you know, on, on your fantasy team is going to come down to that fit, that destination. Who takes them? What did their situation look like? And you know, we're going to talk today, probably say things about one guy we like a little bit more than another. But I'm going to be honest with you. It's gonna, when it's close, it's always going to come down to that offense that they find themselves in. Yeah, and, I, and whether I they're totally agree with that. Like it, when you're scouting these wide receivers, looking at uh, can these guys succeed at the next level? I mean, it's <laughs> we, we don't. You gotta you gotta be careful and not fall madly in love with a player, or you get Hakeem Butlered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody wants to get Hakeem Butler. Not well. Also, insert Andy Isabella. Now. Insert Andy Isabella's name there hey, as well. No, well, to be fair, Andy Isabella was a second round pick, and then he just yeah. was the king of the jet suite. However, last year we did have rookie wide receivers land in places we really didn't like. But then still turn out to be valuable fantasy assets. That that is true. Both AJ Brown and uh, and Terry McLaurin and Hollywood and Hollywood Brown. Yeah, they they ended up in places where it seemed sketchy, seemed sketchy for fantasy. Uh, I mean, well, at least AJ Brown though. That's like yeah, I, I was gonna say you to could be not fair, have predicted a QB change. I was gonna say AJ Brown. We ended were up right. <laughs> getting a better quarterback, and then when Case Keenum was the quarterback, 
it, it was it was still better than than Haskins for Scary Terry. But uh, yeah, the NFL draft will change rankings drastically. All right, I want to encourage you to check us out on Twitter. You're going to want to be there this week, draft week. We're going to go live. I'm going to tell you about that in a moment. But Twitter, oh, at yes. the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. And then I must stress, go to YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Not only will we will be live, will we be live? There you go. And click the bell to find that out. But Jason's newest Jason Eats episode oh, is up. It's a real humdinger. <laughs> it's special very special people are enjoying that i want to tell you about the ballers ultimate Ooh. draft week prize pack and live stream it's here it's finally here the nfl draft is here and what we're doing is we are doing a very special nfl draft oriented prize pack if you ordered the ultimate draft kit before sunday this is huge and spoiler alert i'm just going right to the top this is a listener league spot. People are always want. how do I get in the listener league? Well, someone's getting in the listener league this week just from winning this prize pack. But there well, are next, other, next week. Sure, They'll yeah. get in next week. Sure. Okay. But they're going to, they're, they're punching their ticket this week, Mike. Okay. And we did, we did this last year with the NFL draft. So we're doing it again. We're doing a big prize pack. Again, you got to get the ultimate draft kit before Sunday. That's ultimate draft You're entered to win a listener league spot. You're entered to win a video fantasy draft review with us. So you hop on a Zoom with us. We'll break your team down. We're also giving away a signed Julian Edelman jersey, a signed Devontae Adams mini helmet. And all you got to do is pre-order the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com by April 26th. And don't worry, if you've already pre-ordered it, you are entered to win. Yes. So anybody that's pre-ordered before April 26th, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're doing a live stream on Friday. Yeah, that's, that's the other that's big the headline. Ticket. So talk yeah, about that, Mike. Well, I, I, I talked about this last week. We were saying, what are we most excited for uh, for draft week? This is what I'm excited for. We are doing a big live stream uh, on on Friday. So round one will be in the books. We will know what has happened. Uh, people have frequently asked, guys, like stream during the draft, do this, do that. And we, we kind of had met our minds is like what is the best way we could possibly do this like get out there answer questions react in 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 real time and this was it like we get to watch the first round we get to consume that information we get to sleep on it because often after that first round when that pick happens and you either take the victory lap or you crumble into a pile of goo and then you sleep on it and you go oh yeah maybe maybe this isn't so bad or maybe this is much better than i thought it was initially so i'm very excited it's always a good time to live stream with the foot clan uh, asking us questions and so i'm just i'm i'm very very excited for that part and that's going to be 5 p.m eastern 2 p.m pacific on friday uh streaming on all platforms youtube twitter facebook twitch uh going to be a lot of fun I know we're all going to be on there. We're going to be reacting, arguing, taking questions, and again, get in that prize pack, ultimatedraftkit.com. You're going to you're gonna get it anyways. Yeah. Why not pre-order right now and try and win this cool stuff? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I want to jump right into rookies. Are we ready to go? Let's go. Let's go. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. All right. And this is all about name awareness. This is all about making your Thursday, Friday, Saturday more fun because you are mm -hmm. keeping your eye out for the top prospects and the best potential landing spots, the best fits, the best situations for these guys. And so let's start at the quarterback position. You know, we all broke down, scouted these guys, Joe Burrow, Tua, Herbert, Love. We looked at these guys, and I, I'm going to be honest with you. My first expectation going into film work on these rookies was that I would end up with Tua at the top of my board. That was my expectation. I think from a uh, what, whatever word you want to use, personality. Um, Clutch. Yeah, whatever you want to say about, like, I like Tua's mental makeup. That's what I want in a quarterback. You like um, guys, you like guys a little bit more low key. He's more low key, but he, he's you know, when I compliment him, I feel like I'm somehow insulting the other guys, and I'm not <laughs> meaning to do that. But in some regards, the makeup of Joe Burrow, the the way that he's more Baker, okay, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Burrow's more Baker, and Tua's more Russell Wilson. And I, I think he's a very smart quarterback. I expected him to be at the top of my board. But I say all that to say he wasn't. Joe Burrow was at the top of my board when all was said and done and when you factor in the injury situation. So we start with Joe Burrow at the top of this rookie breakdown. Uh, Joe um, Burrow to me was a you know a nearly flawless prospect, and that's not to say that he's a hundred percent guaranteed to work out. Anybody can can fail, especially if you go to an organization as we expect that you know isn't the best run organization in, in the Bengals. But when I watched the twenty nineteen film, I mean it was like I I couldn't find I couldn't find things to harp on. It was accurate, short. He was accurate deep. He was accurate in intermediate passes. He was as mobile. His pocket awareness was outstanding. Sometimes he got a little too confident, uh, so maybe that will hurt in the NFL. My only worry is just this crazy jump he made from you know the year prior, <laughs> you know, sixteen passing touchdowns to sixty, and you know he was the full time starter both years. And and granted, you expect him to get better and uh, mature, and that was uh, he was a transfer from Ohio State, so that was his first year at LSU two years ago. But twenty nineteen, Joe Burrow was out freaking standing and should be the number one pick and will be in the draft. Yeah, I mean, you you pretty much had as good of a statistical season as you could ever had. Not just 60 touchdowns, just six interceptions. If you and that was the, just the playoffs, the 60 touchdowns. <laughs> That's pretty much how it felt on his way to this, you know, magical <laughs> national title. Almost, you know, the only rhetoric we could have would be to somehow penalize him for jumping up so high in year-to-year -year right. disparity. That's so, a little bit too good for me. What's he really <laughs> hiding? And there were another, I know, you know, um, we, we have an article on the site, a rookie profile on Joe Burrow, and there's another five, six, seven touchdowns that aren't on the board because of penalties pulling them away and things like that. So obviously a very special season for Joe Burrow, but he's going to get rewarded, so to speak, and go number one here to Cincinnati. And I think the big headline here is that, you know, Joe Burrow was playing with elite athletes at LSU. And that includes the offensive line. He was not stressed in the way he will be stressed in the NFL. He was not sacked in the way that he will be sacked in his first year in the NFL. So growing pains, yes, but uh, my number one prospect at quarterback. Yep. I, I have nothing else to add. It was, it was a sensational season and he, he, the tape is so incredibly impressive just all across the board, like Jason was saying. All right. Um, let's talk about Tua. Or do you want to talk about Herbert? Who would you rather talk about? Who do you have uh, on your board, boards higher? I, I have Tua ahead of Herbert. Yeah. I am not. I was surprised. I, I thought I would like Tua's tape more than I personally did. Obviously, he's been you know a highly touted guy for several years. The whole rhetoric this past year was tanking for Tua um, because he was expected to be the number one guy. Then the hip injury came. Um, you know, he he had a. I feel like he had a a better 2018 than he did a 2019. But he's got a lot of intangibles. Uh, scouts love him you know he he's been Alabama star forever and 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 he's great to me there's just a massive a massive tear break here to whoever really? you go to next to me the difference between the Burrow and then uh and Tua Tua I see as 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 a, a massive difference it just personally yeah yeah and that's and that's fair I mean Burrow had an incredible season I see a tear break there when you consider the devastating hip injury that Tua suffered and the the potential risk for that. We have not had the opportunity, no matter how he testifies or looks, in, and he looked good uh, in his workouts, but you haven't got to see that on the field and ha have him take a hit. And that's an incredible risk for an NFL franchise. Uh, this is a very smart quarterback. This is a player that has uh, not thrown interceptions almost ever. You know, it, When you look back last two seasons, 43-6, 33-3, um, extremely efficient passer and worthy of, in my opinion, obviously a top, you know, a top two type of guy, as long as the injury problem isn't there. I wanted to reference a little bit of the mock draft scenarios out there. And I, I'm sure. going to go to Mel Kuyper's most recent one just for the sake of conversation, but he has two a going behind Herbert, but to the chargers, which I believe is what at number six. So, Five or six? Do I have that wrong? Yeah, I'll pull it up. It's one of those two. But uh, when you look at him as a potential fit in Los Angeles, 
Are there some things that excite you about going to the Chargers offense? Well, I'm the not opportunity? sure if he's, like the fit of Tua for the Chargers, like you, you were talking about the interceptions, I think they're far too low for <laughs> what that team is, has grown accustomed to. As in the Chargers will not find it a fit because he's not throwing the yeah. ball to the opposite team more often. I, I, that, that joke was for Jason. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the Philip Rivers uh, interception mocking. Uh, I think that fit would be would be nice. It would give him some quality uh, receivers. Obviously, you're replacing Philip Rivers, and and you've got a nice look. Tyrod Taylor is great at starting a couple games and then really handing those reins over. So that is um, his job. That's so what he did for Baker. Yeah, he built yeah. Baker up just fine. I, I I'm were, realizing we passed we passed. Um, Tua without asking Jason to pronounce his last name. And that does not <laughs> seem like a situation me, me, me. that we really should have put ourselves All in. Right. This is a horrible right, mistake here we go. of here mine. We go. So Tua, I want Tua Tongue of Viola. <laughs> tongue of? That, no, no, no. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> Dang it, man. Tongue. Tongue is I know, how you pronounce it is. the first it's part of, of that Viola, name. But I didn't think you'd get it right. You really oh. let me down. Yeah, I apologize to you and to the Mike, Clan and to my family. can you please pronounce Tua's <laughs> last name? <laughs> Um, you know, let's say you were putting it on the back of a Chargers jersey, and then you were pronouncing it. How would it sound? Oh, if I was putting it on the back, I would have I would to a T. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. Okay, all right. <laughs> if if I am to a, and it's you're right, Andy. Of, of like, if you follow what's going on with the mock drafts in the industry of, of he goes the, there a lot of the wonderful mock draft industry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and that, that's I'm being facetious. It's actually really fun, but. As of late, and I'm talking like the last week, there has been this jump of all of a sudden now Justin Herbert is being projected ahead of two, and it was months and months and months of Burroughs locked in at number one. All right, do does someone try to get the uh, the Lions spot at number three for Tua? Do does Washington bail on Dwayne Haskins and take Tua at number two? So it's interesting that these things are happening. But if I'm Tua and and I drop one spot and I end up with the Chargers with those weapons. Like that is such a better situation than ending up with the Miami, the current Miami rebuild. Opportunities in Los Angeles, marketability, things like that. Herbert went to Miami in the most recent mock, so one pick ahead of Tua. I uh, I look at Herbert as kind of I'm split on him. I really am. From a physical standpoint, six six. Arm strength, uh, slightly better than Jason's. And I think he's very impressive. I think he can make every NFL throw. I think what I saw in college, and this was a guy that was touted to be a number one type of pick going back two seasons. And you didn't quite see that materialize his junior year. You saw the completion percentage dip down and there were concerns. But yeah. I can see why some people like him. And it's interesting, Mike, you brought up the three names, you know, Herbert, Tua, and then obviously Burrow. When you look at what's at stake, you only need to go back a few years to look at the Trubisky, Watson, Mahomes type of year and these decisions right. these guys are making. You Monumental. know that these three are not all working out, is my point. But Jason, what did you want to say about Herbert? Yeah, Herbert to me strikes me as a perfect John Elway prospect he is he's big he's strong. Uh, not john he, elway himself you're he, saying no no but the type of quarterback john elway loves big strong uh can throw the ball over you know them mountains <laughs> it needs to work on his accuracy we can fix that um you know when Does i watch john elway him, do that on purpose like <laughs> he just wants denver to be like yes. to realize like, i'm the I greatest just, i was the best quarterback of all time i'm doing my best here denver uh, i'm bringing these guys in, and they're just not they're just not good enough I, it's not my fault yeah I, you know to me justin herbert if i had to project will he succeed will he fail i would i would be on the fail side um you know if you're looking five years down the road he he certainly has the tools physically to succeed he has the production at uh oregon that is worthy of a first round pick. But when I watch the tape, just too much, um, too much inaccuracy on, there were just so many missed opportunities that I saw on film. Um, and those aren't usually rectified. I mean, when you're not an accurate passer, 
I think that that just doesn't work in the NFL. That that's like the number one thing I look for. Um, so I'm I'm not super high on on Justin Herbert. Yeah, I I think he was a little uneven, and he needs to be in the right situation to have success. Other quarterbacks to look at briefly: Jalen Hurts, Jordan Love. Um, Jordan Love gets some of that draft Nick buzz here and there about his upside and potential. I didn't really fall in love with Jordan Love oh, on a film. Nice one. Thanks. But I'm also not in love with Jalen Hurts. This is a guy that I followed for a long time uh, from his time leaving Alabama, going to Oklahoma, following in the footsteps of Baker and Kyler. And while he is a, he was an elite collegiate producer, my concerns with Jalen Hurts, and Jason, you and I were talking about this, I'm worried we're, worried we're going to be on the Deshaun Kaiser type of train with Jalen Hurts, where um, athletic, dynamic player, but I don't know if it's going to translate, so I'm not extremely excited about those two guys. I know you talked a little bit about yeah. the possibility of Hurts to New England. I, which I, would I would love Hurts to go at the end of the first to, to New England, have them build around him. I love Hurts as a prospect. He actually is accurate. Granted, he had all day to throw the ball with a great offensive line, but he's a super dynamic runner, um, not to the level of Lamar Jackson, but he would be that next guy out there, you know, better than Deshaun Watson or, or Kyler at running the ball and is accurate in the in, in the pocket. I think he took a, a big step up this year, and, and some of that obviously is Lincoln Riley and Oklahoma and in the system, but some of that was him. He looked good to me. I really like him as a prospect, but the reason I threw out Kaiser when we were talking offline is because, look, I got to admit when I'm wrong, too, I, <laughs> I I thought Kaiser was a really good prospect, and uh, he was not. So, yeah, Jalen Hurts is a – to me, he's just that – he's a real big upside play, especially if we're talking for fantasy football, right? Like, if he gets drafted anywhere relevant and he gets a role, he's going to be good for fantasy football. He runs the ball – too much to not be. So I, I'm I'm in on Jalen Hurts. Ky Kuiper has him to Pittsburgh, Jason. What do you think about that? I would love that. The next in line. It. Yeah, it, it's a great organization. They will build around him the yeah, way that the true. Ravens are a great organization, and they built around Lamar Jackson. All right, before we talk about running backs, I want to thank one of our very favorite sponsors. We appreciate them for oh so many reasons. They support the show, and they support my habit. And my habit, of course, is grilling meat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mike, I saw you shared a little picture on your IG of you grilling I, up some dogs. I, w I was using the grill. The Arizona weather is about to make us all vanquish. You just so don't I need was... to use propane soon. You just use the sun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I was I was getting I was getting out there, man. <laughs> it's it's, bur it's birthday week about done. real soon. I'm gonna be eating so many fillets. So yes. many fillets. Yeah. So uh Omaha steaks, we want to thank them. Look, if you're staying home which we all are. There's never been a better time to stock up. They deliver the world's best steaks and a huge variety of family favorites without leaving your house. They also uh, they deliver guaranteed quality and safety with each and every order, which is very important. And as you're stocking up on the things you need, do not forget the things that you love. And we're talking about mm -hmm. that meat. So right now, the Omaha Steaks limited stock up sale is available for our listeners to help your family stock up on the food you love, go to omahasteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar, and you can save more than 50% on your order and get free shipping on orders of $69 or more. Omaha Steaks is partnering with Feeding America to help families in need right now. They've already donated 100,000 servings of premium proteins, and when you buy select combo packages, they'll donate even more. So visit omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar and help support feeding america that's pretty cool and delicious jason you have a, a running back article up on the website right now yeah i i took the time because we've got this extra time people are wanting content for the first time ever i wrote up my scouting on the running back position uh all the guys that that i took a look pre-draft and scouted gave my opinions my talent score uh ranked them in tiers so if you want to check that out fantasyfootballers.com well why don't you start by talking about the guy i know at the top of your board jonathan taylor running back out of wisconsin uh 511 219 probably you know statistically one of the most incredible collegiate prospects at running back of all time of all time yeah and so 50 collegiate touchdowns in three years at wisconsin over 6100 rushing yards 
talk to me about what you see in Jonathan Taylor. He's it, to me, he's the the clear cut uh, number one, just personally. Um, you know, and and I believe he he actually combined at two twenty three uh, and ran a sub four four forty. So this is a guy who in college was dominant. Nobody could stop him, putting up two thousand yards every single year. And then when you go and and, and he looks fast on tape. You know, you see him pulling away from cornerbacks when he's 223 pounds, and then you come in and rub a, uh, run a sub 4 4 40. I, I, I just think that that translates. And the only weakness is in his game. He's got a big fumbling problem that obviously needs to be corrected. But that's something that we have seen time and time again. Players come in with that from college, and they can correct it, unlike accuracy at quarterback. So I'm not too worried about that, especially if he has the draft capital. I hope he gets uh, with you know a first round or high second round pick. Oh, he'll he'll be a second round pick at the latest. And um, you know, and then the other issue is, well, is he a pass catcher for fantasy? That's what people want to know. He he didn't do that much until this last year. Uh, but this last year, you know, Mike, you 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 saw this and pointed it out. I pointed out in my article, he had a larger percentage team market share uh, than uh, your eclair did over at LSU. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, for his offense, he was involved. He was a pass catcher. And when I watched him at the combine and the drills, he looked smooth to me. So uh, I love Jonathan Taylor. I think he's a, a grade A, you know, this is a what, what's the highest USDA prime, <laughs> you know, going to the Omaha <laughs> States. You would, this, you would know, Jason. Yeah, yeah, you would know this, more than any of us. Oh, it's Jonathan Taylor. That's the answer. <laughs> Tampa was the destination Kuiper had in his most recent mock draft. Before the show, I mentioned if that fumbling problem translates to the professional level, that would be a concern with Bruce problem. Arians. Yeah, yes. that's a that's a bad that's a bad 18, coach. 18 fumbles in college, lost fifteen of them. The other, again, as the a top tier prospect, the other mark against him for some would be durability concerns because he took. So many, you know, 926 carries in his college career could make him, you know, that could be a point in his favor it, that because it's always he's chicken done or it, egg. or it could be a point against him because of the workload yes. and durability concern. To me, it's important when you say durability that you, you bring up, he was healthy. He, Correct. He, he took that work, you know, what Leonard Fournette should have had durability concerns, you know, constantly injured, even though he's a big bruising guy coming into the NFL. This guy's been healthy. Now, does he have a shorter career? Maybe, may, you know what I mean? Maybe the, his second contract isn't quite as good, but in today's fantasy football world and the NFL world, it's all about the rookie contract for running backs. Use them, run them into the ground, and replace them. Sorry, mothers, don't let your children grow up to be yes. running backs. All right, DeAndre Swift. Let's talk about DeAndre Swift out of Georgia. Uh, Kuiper has him to the Chiefs. I've seen, this is one of the, when you look at tons and tons of mocks, there's a few situations where guys just keep ending up in the same location. Swift to the Chiefs at 32. I see it over and over again. I yeah. <laughs> when, when I look at these players and I'm grading them at the running back position, I had Swift slightly better than Taylor in a fantasy context. I think he's going to come into the NFL and he's going to be involved in the passing game immediately. That's not to say Taylor can't be. It's expectation. And I expect it with DeAndre Swift. He's a dynamic player. He's an explosive player. I like him a little bit more as a fantasy prospect than Taylor. But you're splitting hairs, and ultimately it's going to come down on which team they land on. My favorite part about DeAndre Swift when, when I'm watching this tape is, so one, his edge speed is, is absolutely spectacular of, of hitting the edge. And he has this innate uh, juking type ability where when I'm watching him, it rem he looks like a car that just for a split second goes into neutral. So like you're... You're going really jitter, fast. Jitterbug. Yeah, you're going. I mean, you're going full speed, and then you you have just this slight hitch, and then he slams the car back into gear, and he's back at top speed immediately. Like his ability to change uh, between these levels of speed is is unbelievable. And and while he does that, you know, I I wrote down in my notes he's he's extremely shifty, but he has this great ability to do what you just described while staying north south. Not, yes. go, not going sideways, but actually just picking up more yards as he pauses, changes speeds. Very shifty. I mean, what a great, what a great name. Swifty. 
That's what Ooh. I was going to say. I mean, this is like, you know, we we talked about Paul Getting Perkins Swifty. couldn't get it done because his name wasn't Smash Jackson. DeAndre Swift comes in with a leg up on the name competition. That's here. true. That's a good point. And that actually for this show, it matters quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Some he, say it matters I, more than other things. I think we all loved DeAndre Swift. He's yeah. he's a, a really good prospect. Will probably be, I mean, it's too early to know because the NFL draft hasn't happened, but I have been assuming that the first two picks in most rookie drafts will be Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift. All right, let's move on to J.K. Dobbins. Uh, I know that I stand a little bit more alone in not loving this player at the next level. But that's because his name is J.K. and I figure he's just trick. He's just tricking us. <laughs> Jokes. He's just. It's he's uh, just, kidding. just kidding. He's just kidding. With the, no, I mean, Mike. You know, you you pointed out to me. I think when you were showing the performance of J.K. Dobbins against what was it LSU compared to every other running back that went up oh, against yeah, LSU. It, it, yeah, the stat you're referring to was just Dobbins yards per carry against top rush defenses, which was a spectacular yards per carry compared to every other running back against those teams, which they shut down the run. I love Dobbins. Uh, he had like, I fluctuate between Dobbins and Deandre Swift as my second favorite running back in the class. And that's not to say I'm choosing which one will be more fantasy relevant. I need to see their team first, but I think Dobbins is really, really talented and he did it against top level competition. I mean, you saw him, it's one game, so small sample size. But in the playoffs, like you, you saw him just shine. You saw his his game speed is is absolutely top notch. If if he gets going, like like if he if he gets into the the secondary, he's probably gone. Like he, he's going to go score. He's he can catch the ball. He could do everything. Yeah, I just he I think he is a very very well rounded, uh, talented running back. Jason, did you want to speak to Dobbins? I I really like it. I, he's just very well rounded. I worry that his size um, might preclude him from having the workhorse role. He can handle it. He is a workhorse back. He's built for pretty much all situations. But if the NFL does not uh, agree, or the teams th that have the ability to draft him, if he ends up at a place where I, I could see his his issue being that he's a committee back. That's um, that's why I have him where I do. That's why I got him at five. Yeah, but I love the talent, and I love the fact that when he played against the best, he was better. He not yeah. just better than himself; he was better than the competition. He just he he, you know, and I love that in a player. So I, Mike, I expect good things. Mike, are you going to wince profusely if he lands where Mel Kiper has him, which is the Los Angeles Chargers? Ooh, uh, I w I will wince a little bit because my man Austin Eckler, like he, that Eckler good friend of the show. Eckler is my my guy, but for the Chargers, I mean, going forward with J.K. Dobbins and Austin Eckler, that's a really strong combination. All right, my kind of uh, my favorite runner in, in terms of value to talent in this draft class of running back is Cam Akers out of Florida State. Uh, everything that I saw in film was uh, when you could overlook what the offensive line oh, situation man. was. Watching film on Cam Akers. I mean, is this is this is an rough. explosive player. Ran a 4-4-7. Uh, great instincts. Great speed to the edge. I think he profiles as a, a three-down guy in the NFL. And, you know, Graham Barfield posted about... A lot has been said about Florida State's offensive line, which was atrocious. But I just want to illustrate it when you're looking at where... Cam Akers' production level wasn't in the level of the the Jonathan Taylors, which no one really is, but even Swift or Dobbins. But here's what he was dealing with. And this is from Graham Barfield, as I said. He tweeted this out. How bad was the FSU line? 0.57 yards blocked per attempt. That is the worst in the history of his yards created stat. And that's since 2016. Um, he was contacted at or behind the line of scrimmage on 30% of rushes, yeah, which is rough. absolutely insane. Still put up over 1,100 yards. Um, he's an elite player to me and the one that I kind of, you know, everybody in, in these draft classes, they pick this, you know, their favorite kind of darling. And Cam Akers is my running back darling for fantasy because I think if he ends up in the right position, he may take over that job quicker than I, uh, others. Yeah. 
I love them. And I, it's funny. I, I see, um, you know, on Twitter, a lot of people, whenever Cam Akers is brought up, they're like, oh, let's see how many times they mention the O-line. It's like, go watch. You, you go, have to. You, it's, it was the hardest tape I've ever had to watch. It, I, I, I loved when <laughs> I got to see what Cam Akers could do, but I hated watching his film and struggling through. <laughs> and that poor quarterback. Oh, my oh, goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, he, I, I loved uh, a lot of his qualities. I'm, I'm right there with you, Andy. He, he looked like if he gets the right opportunity, he could be in the tier of the other guys we're talking about. And I think I, I believe, and, and some people believe that the NFL draft will follow, will not follow mocks more now than ever with the situation where there's a little bit less group think happening. Teams aren't connected to one another as much, and there's the potential to see some surprises. I would not be surprised personally to see Akers go before Dobbins. So that'll be my, my little surprising call here. Clyde Edwards Alaire. Let's talk about, uh, Great pass catching back out of LSU. Joe Burrow's been very friendly with his uh, recommendation of Clyde Edwards Alaire. Said he's the most talented player he's ever played with. But he goes to the next level after putting up a 55 in the reception total. <laughs> and so, what were your takeaways with Clyde Edwards Alaire? Because this is another guy that, you know, he reminded me of Mark Ingram, somebody that I think could, could tote the, uh, you know, the rock on all three downs. What do you like? What don't you like? Uh, he, what jumped out to me is immediately he looks like a. This is an Andy Reid running back. Like if, and I had this was a, a couple months ago. I had tweeted what happens to rankings because everyone, rightly so, loves Jonathan Taylor. We love DeAndre Swift. What happens if Kansas City spends a day two pick on Clyde Edwards-Alaire? What happens to your running back rankings? And the answer is your rankings get thrown in the shredder, and <laughs> and you start over from scratch because. He is he is a great running back. All the running backs we're talking about right now deserve to be in the NFL, deserve their shot. But 55 receptions, over 1,400 yards on the ground. Uh, it, according to PFF, in 2019, he broke 70 tackles on 214 carries, only two fumbles. Like He is a great running back. It got to play on a very prolific team, also in the SEC, also against top-notch competition. So I'm very excited to see where where he ends up i was definitely the coolest on yes uh, you were on clyde edwards you did not want to want a bite of that delicious edwards eclair <laughs> eclair well i always want a bite of an eclair mike how dare you but um yeah i mean so when i first watched him and and you know sometimes you need to take a break go back scout someone again because when you're when i'm scouting these guys oftentimes i'm going in order so most of these people we had already talked about i'm watching their tape and then i put on clyde edwards alaire he looks a little bit slower a little bit smaller you know uh this is a guy that to me he's he got that mjd build that type of game but he doesn't have mjd's crazy the, the thighs. speed well, nobody has the thighs, maybe Saquon, <laughs> but um, that that crazy speed that MJD had. When I watch him play, he is a good back. He's well rounded. He's well. He's got great balance. But I just wonder if you know he played with power. He he initiated contact and was like a bowling ball out there. Um, but at 207 pounds, I don't know that that's going to work in the NFL. And he's not going to be playing with the LSU Tigers and the best offense and have Joe Burrow opening things up. So to me, I, I'm, I'm not as excited about him as I am about other people. The one thing that you can't discount, though, is when you get 55 receptions and he had a nice little route running on the short slants. Yes. Uh, you know, that, that will help for fantasy. And it'll what keep do you think his... about the Rams? That's where Kuiper had him landing. How would that make oh, you feel with you got like a brutal. three-headed monster there? Uh, I, I'll be I'll I'll probably stick with my pre-draft ranking and be lower on him than most. That's where when you know just bringing up that hypothetical destination. That's where the film work and the review of the player. That's where you have to like buy in to the idea of a player winning a job, mm -hmm. because if you don't like what you see on tape then you don't believe he's going to come into Los Angeles and have a shot but you know with Daryl uh Henderson or you know Marlon Brown. Well, and it's so funny because it's not enough to say he goes to the Rams, no. right? Does he Malcolm. go to the Rams in Malcolm, the first yeah. or second or does he go to the Rams in the fourth right. or fifth? Yep. Cuz you know, then it's it's a matter of how much is the team invested in 
you know, in their future in this player. Before we move to wide receivers, is there any other running backs? Obviously, there are many others that will be drafted. Is there any others that you want to bring up that you think will have fantasy relevance potentially this year? I know Zach Moss is a name. Jason, did you uh, you wrote up a profile yeah. on Kashawn Vaughn? Yes, uh, I, I like Vaughn a lot. Yeah, as Jason a runner. and I are in on Vaughn. He he, uh, for better or worse, reminded me a lot of Carry On Johnson. So you know, take it or leave it. Um, and I I wasn't that big a fan of Zach Moss. I know there's some people out there that absolutely love him. He's 223 pounds and can catch the ball. That's great. But he looked so slow to me personally when I was, I, I I never saw him really run away. Like in college, when a guy has the speed, they run away and the rest of the field is theirs and they get the touchdown. And he had big plays where he showed his speed, but it, it just looked slower to me. And that has nothing to do with his combine time. I don't care about combine times that much. This was pre-combine watching the tape. I just didn't feel like he was fast enough or strong enough for the next level. All right, let's talk some wide receivers. There are a number of very talented prospects coming they are into bountiful the NFL. This year. And so let's talk about the two more high-profile, most mentioned names doesn't mean that they are necessarily the best. Um, but let's see where you guys have them. Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb. Jerry Judy out of Alabama. A lot's been made of, of his you know incredible route running, a technician, his ability to really come in and be a difference maker right away. Kuiper has him going to Jacksonville. That would be interesting. But last year, 77 receptions, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. The year before, 68 for over 1,314. So um, when it, when you look at Judy and you look at Lamb, who did you guys have profiled higher? I, I was similar to what you were saying with scouting Tua. I assumed I'd come in with Judy the highest because I, I loved him the last couple years while scouting other players at Alabama. I'm like, man, this Judge Judy guy is unbelievable. Um, but actually, C.D. Lamb is the guy that I ended up with at number one. Um he just he was so dominant I mean you want to talk about a yak master nobody could tackle the guy nobody could get him down if there was a ball in the air I always assumed he would catch it if he didn't catch it it was surprising to me um so I think his you're talking traits, about CD lamb yes CD lamb and I love both of these guys um they would they would be my top tier these two uh but I have CD lamb as like I would I'll be shocked if CeeDee Lamb doesn't make it in the NFL. And and for wide receivers, even high draft capital wide receivers, they don't always make it in the NFL. I mean, we have so many examples of first-round NFL wide receivers who are busts as opposed to running backs. Um, and so, But I, I'll be shocked if, if CeeDee Lamb doesn't translate. Yep, I, I have Lamb as my number one guy for, for all the reasons Jason was talking about. He just – he is – his ups his upside is so incredible he is a, he has a highlight machine and uh the the concern you if you want to talk about draft uh your draft location i know we you mentioned kuiper's got julia jacksonville and cd lamb to the 49ers uh i personally i will be shocked if the raiders don't end up with one of these players I, one of these two yeah obviously they can't take a quarterback and still get one of these wide receivers, but I think they'll move forward with Carr and they'll get one of these guys. It's and that's when you have to buy into the talents. Like it, that wouldn't be my favorite landing spot for Ceedee Lamb to end up with the Las Vegas Raiders, but you got to. That's where I'm. I'm going to buy into the talent. I think that Lamb is good enough to overcome and will be. I I agree with Jason of the guys in this class. Lamb to me, feels like the the one most secure to not bust. I think, personally, I think Lamb and Judy are both locks to have successful NFL careers um, from a talent perspective. I, I do side with Lamb a little bit more, um, but it's going to come down to where these guys end up and are these teams going to build around them as the primary you know wide receiver one in their respective franchises. Let's move on. Let's talk about Henry Ruggs III out of Alabama, another Alabama wideout. Um, impressive. We've got the Eagles taking him, which I think we had a quick question a few weeks ago about, you know, uh, I, I don't even remember what the exact question was, but it, we had projected the Eagles taking a wide receiver. In this case, it would be Ruggs, according to Kuiper. 
Jason, when you looked at rugs on film, what were your takeaways? He's Obviously, super, in the in the shadow so of, Judy, of Judy, he's so fast. It's just it's you know when when you do four get him two seven on a on a uh, on a crossing route where like oh there, there's a little pick play and he gets it just like Goodbye. every defender just should lay down so save your save your gas because you're not going to catch him. But he's not much of a technician or a route runner. You know, everything was just a big bend, a big you know find a hole in his own and run. Um, and so for fantasy, I'm not sure that he's going to be the type of player I like. I think he's going to be that big play, take the top off the defense. I think he's important for an NFL team to have a guy that can threaten with that crazy go route, um, you know, and, and that speed on on some of those sweeps. Um, I, I, I think he has – he'll be drafted high and will be an important player in the NFL, but I don't expect him to be a, uh, a number one target for his team uh, career wise, that's you know that just wasn't his role in college. He is this doesn't. A John, see- is this a John Ross situation with the talent? You come in, you're a compliment. Oof. You've got that game breaking, you know, record breaking speed, but the team doesn't build around you. Or do you think that Ruggs can can get through that? I mean, yeah, five eleven, five eleven, one eighty eight. Yeah, I think it's more. I think it's more akin to uh, you know we we've talked about Tavon Austin a lot about he actually does help his NFL team over the course of his career, he really opens things up for other players and his, you know, few plays that are game changing change the game. But I I don't think he's going to be, uh, that was on purpose, but, uh, I, I, I don't see him being a, a one for fantasy football. Yeah. The, the big knock that everyone brings up about Henry Ruggs is he was the third wide receiver on his own team. And that's, it's, it, it's tough when when you are the third option on your team and now you're getting first round buzz. It's it's hard to really merge those two things together because the production correlates so strongly with will a wide receiver actually make it in the NFL? Alabama though, they are they are this own they are their own section when They're it comes to They're their own to, league. He's yeah. the number <laughs> thir- 3 wide receiver in the league. But, but I mean like they like take uh, Josh Jacobs for example last year. Josh Jacobs was not the production monster uh, compared to other guys being drafted at the running back position last year. But you could watch Josh Jacobs and say that guy's the best running back. Like you, you kind of have to you have to throw out the production a little bit because of the way that Alabama plays football. Yeah, I mean they they have because not four, everybody can score on every play. They have four Fair. wide receivers last year on their roster that could legitimately be first round picks two this year two next year and that was actually one of my issues watching judy that surprised me is i wasn't sure he was the number one on the team this year you know there were games that he kind of disappeared for and seemed like i mean i still love love judy uh but i i just noticed that and and that also should speak a little bit to tua right like you know you talk about burrow had elite everywhere burrow did not have the wide receiving core that tua had with just four unbelievable wide receivers. Yeah, and we, we'll talk about one of his guys in a minute. Uh, let's talk about Jalen Rager uh, out of TCU. I really Man. like Jalen Rager. I, you, I, like, you really like him? I really did like him. When okay. I watched, uh, I saw a guy who was super fast, super fast. Like, he's got four, four, seven was his yeah, combine. Yeah, very athletic, yes. But I actually thought he played faster than that. There were certain plays where he his quickness was just so elite. Um and he he was tough. He would go over the middle. He was fe- he played fearless. You know, you, you look at the San Francisco 49ers and you look at the difference between Debo Samuel and Dante Pettis, right? Both talented guys. One is fearless in Debo. Just, you know, that's why we say now you remind him you know he's just a man out there and um i really liked rager not only is he uh athletically gifted but he played to you know it it matched on the field and so i i was i was a pretty i was a pretty big fan yeah he's a i think kuiper called him a touchdown waiting to happen he's another guy like uh rugs was kuiper had him going to the ravens at 50 Five in the draft. Ooh, what do you think? Man, mm. I would like not number. I would not want to play defense against the Ravens. It would be better for Hollywood the Ravens Brown, than it would for Did you guys fantasy see owners. Yes. The you know source withheld, uh, but there was a publication out there, and they were saying 
Kansas City may try to trade up for Henry Ruggs. So it's funny when we were talking about him, I was just going to say, like, if he were to go, <laughs> they just want the fastest team in the world. We that have one be, play uh, on offense. One with their run with their seventh, run as fast as you can with their seventh round. Never pick, back. The Kansas City Chiefs select Usain Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin Jefferson, we got to see him in the national title game. 1,540 yards, 18 touchdowns, 6'1", 202, ran a 4'4", 3. He is a uh, a monstrous man, big catch radius. Uh, the Broncos were the destination of <laughs> choice. I've also seen the Broncos potentially trading up to grab a Judy or a Lamb, wanting to get another big weapon for Drew Locke on the op opposite side of uh, Cortland Sutton. But Justin Jefferson, Jason, when you broke him down, does he look like a player that in the right situation can be an elite weapon? Uh, well, yes, but with different expectations than I think most. I saw him, you know, I, I think he would be a great number two. I don't see him as a, a true number one guy. He was the number one guy, obviously, for uh, LSU in college. That's great. I saw him more as a Golden Tate, Randall Cobb, uh, type of guy he got a lot of uh, screens a lot of uh, you know he he used his uh, speed but I don't I didn't think he was like a precision route runner necessarily um, but there, there I, I think he's a very good player but I think he's going to work better in the NFL as as a two than as a one all right uh, other wide receivers that were standouts for you before we close out today's show I would bring up uh, the name of Denzel Mims simply because he's he's athletically off the charts out of Baylor. Uh, four three eight. Yeah, six and three he's, two oh and seven. He's six three six three sub four four. So his adjusted speed score is just is off the charts. Uh, if, if you read the write up on our website from Matt Harmon, there are. I mean, you, you better have a fan to try and, and and cool yourself down when you see the names that are being mentioned in this article with Denzel Mims. Uh, granted, he still is, even though he has a lot of playing time under his belt, he still is more of a raw wide receiver. He is a bit of a work in progress, but he's one of those guys where if he ends up at a, a, a strong organization and they can really help him mold his craft, Denzel Mims could... Uh, could become dominant, but he also is one of those guys where it's the, what about the, Indianapolis? the floor is very low. What about Indianapolis going uh, there? Yeah, I, I would actually, I would take that. Get a year with Philip Rivers. Have him Frank, be the Mike Williams. Yeah, I mean the, the organization seems very very stable with with Frank Reich right now. Yeah, I I, I like Denzel Mims. It's funny the, there are certain situations where, um, for better or worse, you get biased from other events and so for me i i got a little bit hakeem butlered scared because mm. uh, you know hakeem butler was so tall and fast and big and he just you know looked dominant really loved his tape and then uh, obviously hakeem butler could still be great he, he missed his rookie year due to injury not uh not just not getting on the field although good luck now <laughs> hopkins am i right um <laughs> but yeah denzel mims looked good he, he played for four years I know there's a strong, strong correlation. Four, four ish. Yeah, but there's a strong correlation for wide receivers that come out early um, yeah. to succeed for fantasy. So he, he had the, the comp of Josh Gordon, according to uh, Mr. Yes, that's, Matt that's what I was saying. There, there's some names the, in there that'll make you blush. But yeah, you are right, Jason. Of the uh, he, he played through to uh, the age of 22 season. His breakout, though, was when he was 20. You prefer to see a breakout age of 19, but there's nothing wrong with a thousand yard season when you're 20. Yeah, he, he he was bigger, stronger than a lot of his competition. I just wonder, will that be able to translate? Because he is right. He's 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 elite. He's four three eight. I mean that you know that's that's elite. But obviously, if he's used to using those skills to dominate weaker competition, will it translate to the NFL? But he, he certainly has a high. I think he is a high floor, low high. <laughs> High ceiling, I see low, low floor. floor. Yeah, there I, we go. I totally agree. T. Higgins out of Clemson is the last name probably worth mentioning. 6'4", 215. Uh, he's humongous. We saw him last year. Uh, Kuiper has him going to the Packers. 
did you guys have a good grade on Higgins potentially sliding up into that? Uh, you know, is he a second round pick? Is this a player that you're going to see go to a better team because of his draft capital situation? Uh, yeah, I think the draft yeah. capital will will Maybe. matter a lot. I think it'll matter a lot for him. Um, I've seen him, I've seen him mocked in the first round. Um, and what? I've, really, yeah, I have. And um, oh my, if that happens, uh, things are going to change. He's he's a player that I think uh, you want to see where it lands after the draft to to know uh, more about the the location he lands than Green than Bay. His own town. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I, I think T. Higgins would be their second best receiving prospect. <laughs> second, yeah. be second best prospect. Well, I'm just I'm saying I okay. I think I would like T. Higgins better than Devin Funches. Uh, you know, better that's than not saying much. No, I I know, but you know, it, yeah, that's no, a good that's spot fine. for him. Dude, we don't have to talk about him anymore. We don't have to talk about T. Higgins anymore. All right. Uh, Two things. Want to thank our uh, one of our favorite favorite companies in the world, Pristine Auction. Mm. Yesterday, a signed uh, Darren Waller logo football went for fifty four dollars. But oh. they're doing a very special giveaway right now, an April giveaway. If you go to pristineauction.com slash raffle, they're giving away a signed Joe Burrow LSU helmet. And these are not. I'm pretty easy sure that's to gonna be worth a lot. Soon. Yeah, those are not easy to come by. They're doing that. Um, PristineAuction.com slash raffle to enter. Um, free to enter. Go check it out. And when you make, sign up, make yeah. make sure that you use the promo code Ballers because in the future, whenever you decide to get in and uh, get in on one of these auctions, that'll give you ten free bucks. So use use Ballers at sign up uh, when you go to PristineAuction.com slash raffle. Yeah, we are so excited for this draft. And a reminder before we close out, ultimatedraftkit.com. Get the Ultimate Draft Kit at the lowest possible price right now and do it before Sunday because then you're entered to win that listener league spot. You're entered to win a video draft review with us, those signed uh, Edelman jersey, Devontae Adams mini helmet. Again, ultimatedraftkit.com before April 26th. So it's through the draft weekend. Go in there now. Get yourself entered to win. You're already going to get the ultimate draft. Yep. Mike said it before. Yep. You're going to get it before the season. Might as well get it now, and then you get those rookie and dynasty rankings before everybody else. And set so. your calendar reminder to Pacific 5 Eastern this Friday. The fantasy footballers will be live reacting. Did you I say, say something wrong? Yeah. yeah. What did well, I say wrong? You just said just set your time to Pacific. Yeah. You didn't oh, say I like to Pacific. Uh, so, so whatever, man. Good. Well, no, you, it's not whatever. You no, got to say the actual I, time. I, I Otherwise, you you're saying time. an ocean. You can't just say you can't just say an ocean, Mike. <laughs> Wait, you can't just say two p.m. Set Pacific? your clocks to Atlantic. Yes. No, <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, two p.m. Pacific. Yeah. No, maybe right. you were saying set your calendars to two Pacific. Hmm. But it sounded like you were set your calendars. Two Pacific. Two okay. Pacific. Oh, All right. Okay. 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 Now we. But yes. <laughs> two, two p.m. Pacific. To two. Yes. <laughs> so this Friday, anyways, at two p.m. Yeah, see Pacific us at the Arctic Ocean. We will be there, and that is it for today's show. <laughs> I'll Judge see you, Giamatti, Andy, Mike, in the and Baltic Jason, sea. waving goodbye. The next time we speak, it will be draft day, folks. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.